and then I'll place it. So I, I, on the agenda for me is just looking at uh, some issues. Other than anything else you wanted uh, to talk about for Yarka and Kushal in particular, uh, demo stuff or just just quick updates. Um, if not, then uh, looking at 11.3, I'll share my screen. Um, we have these things here. Um, so uh, let's let's talk through them really quickly. I think all of them have MRs. Is that correct? Yes. So uh, the first item of the list is something uh, that we found in the afternoon. Uh, actually, Mark found it uh, on staging as well as uh, happening on local. So I mentioned uh, a GIF within that that issue, uh, mentioning what is happening there. So it was a small bug fix. Uh, I have the MR open, and it is currently assigned to fill for review. So it will it will mostly be reviewed uh, either today or tomorrow, and uh, we will get it. Finished. So the okay. problem was that uh, if uh, if there is any fixed date uh, set to a particular epic, and if we switch to date type as from milestones, and then we switch it back again from from uh, milestones to fixed, then it would uh, replicate the date whatever the milestone had into the epic. Oh, okay. The okay. fixed one. So yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, you marked as 11.3, that, that's great. Uh, and then let's talk about this one last. These two have open MRs, right? The last two, is that correct? And then so we're just waiting for review. Um, do we expect it to be merged by Friday? Or which is the seventh, I think. Any any problems with these two? Uh, no, those, those two will be merged by Friday if really something unexpected doesn't come, but it should okay. be. No, so, so we have okay. The so there's review, so, yeah. Okay, thanks, Eric. So reviewers are looking at it right now, and then um, yeah, you folks yeah. are addressing mm -hmm. comments. And then I know this one. There was a lot of back and forth for the the bug. Yeah, yeah because the uh, one issue is fixed. Or uh, there, this is just one thing I have to do to provide to the maintainer before I merge it. Before he merges it. Okay. But the the original issue. There is discussion between Jan and Alessio, and they are trying to figure out what is actually okay. a good way to fix it. Okay. But, so, um, yeah. so should I should I bug Sean about it, Yarka? Like, so is is this basically no, no, no. I right talked now? I talked with Sean about it today. Okay. And we'll solve it somehow. Okay. Okay. So, so you're still still managing it. Um, I understand. Like, it might not make it for 11.3 because. Um, but yeah, because there are two uh, possible fixes. One is on Volgor's side, and second is on GitLab side. Okay. And maybe we want to do both. Maybe we want to do only one of them. So, we'll see. But okay. should be should be solved. At least if we decide to solve it on the GitLab side, then I am right. pretty sure we can make it up to Friday. Okay. Vargos, I I'm not sure how the process is there, but I'm pretty sure again okay. my it shouldn't be that difficult. Okay, so so it looks like everything will be finished here except for this one, um, which might bleed into eleven point four. Um, so let's take that in, into account um, as we talk about eleven point four. So I, I linked to this in the agenda. Um, so basically, I tried to classify into. Uh, two sets of things like the do 22nd and so if you look at the do 22nd um, uh, it basically want to see if we could finish all the close open and close epic things and focus on that and then maybe squeeze one extra one in if not then that's fine um, but let's just look at this list um, so let me go through this really quickly so closing an epic um, so you need to do it on the back end, close an epic. So, so let me, sorry, let me step back. So when I say close an epic, I mean um, exact identical functionality as, you know, open close for issues, right? So pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, and so when you close an epic on the back end and API, there's, that should be hopefully pretty forward, straightforward. Closing and um, whichever one we do first, for these two, closing via buttons or closing via act, quick action, we have to also do the UI design um, or, or the uh, this badge. We have to at least have this badge, right? 
Mm -hmm. um, so so that's the the front end thing I would see, and then um, but so so that's necessary. So that's the only state I can see from the front end perspective. Um, but obviously you have to have the functionality for button version and the quick action version. And then from the list view version, um, so you, we would need to have the, these three tabs essentially. And then there's a discussion, I don't know if Pedro update, uh, responded, but I said like, let's not even worry about the count for now and just have these three tabs um, and then have identical things here, right? So I don't even want to change anything here. It's going to be just identical. So minimize uh, the scope. And then, um, yeah, and then that's it for closed. And then are we? So we go ahead. sorry, really. Uh, do, so we, we're showing the counts for all of the epics, but you're saying that we, for the, at least for this issue, we should not show for open and closed. Is right. that because you think it can be more work from the back end side, or exactly, um, exactly. So, so if we time, if we have time, I think we should totally do it, and then we should have issues for it, and um, and we can talk about it here. But like, just the the minimal thing I can think of is, is that, and then we can, you know, we can clean it up in, in subsequent issues. Not not even from back end perspective, I actually think it might not be more work, okay. but I have to conf confirm it. Right. I, I mean, well, yeah. yeah, I mean. I, I think it should at least be more work from the front end perspective just to literally code that unless you're unless the front end is so awesome that epic issues and merge requests are identical in terms of the tabs and then you just port things over, which I, I don't think is the case. So Yeah, as as far as uh, like having the tabs is concerned, uh, even from the front end side there isn't much effort because uh, we will be reusing the list part of the page uh, across all the tabs. So okay. that basically is common. Okay. So what well, I, I mean let, let's just those are the requirements, and then you can always go above and beyond, right? So, um, um, but let, let's let's target for for that scope, and then as you as you work into it, you know, just ping the channel and say like, you know, I've already coded this in; it's like minimal risk, and you know, somebody go and then and then you know, you update the description or I'll update the description. So I, I just want to set like the baseline, and then and then go. From yeah, there. I'll I'll put it as a so Yarka, I'll put it as a. Like a stretch. Yep, that's that's great. Yep. Item mm -hmm. on yep. the issue, uh, so that you uh, remember that when you're looking at the code, if it's possible to have the counts, we have them. If it's yeah, not sure. feasible for this iteration, we do it in uh, next. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Cool. So, Thank you. So let me stop there and say, um, like, even like ignore this one for now. Um, so, if we want to get all of this in, is that is that possible? between Yarka and Kushal in... Um, you mean uh, until 22nd? Yeah, so starting next, so starting Monday, right? Should, it will be the yeah, start. Yeah, I think uh, from backend uh, back perspective, it is possible uh, because, well... The, it's mostly the, just this, right? The, yeah, the most, the most uh, difficult will be the first part, like implementing the um, database changes, changing the models, and things like that. Once we have like close and reopen epics with buttons, which includes uh, closing them. Oh, once we have the first issue, which means which means we also have service for closing them. The second two, like close reopens epics with buttons and via quick action, are quite st straightforward. So yeah. But I wouldn't include the last one. I mean the third directions. In due twenty second, I'm not sure that. Okay, which all what do you think? Yeah, uh, uh, the sorting part also from the front end side, uh, it isn't much effort. But obviously, as Yarka mentioned, like it might require some effort on the back end side. So we can skip uh, at least that from the due twenty second. The rest of the items uh, we're good to go because the shell that we already have. Uh, adding a close badge or close or open badges uh, for each epic as well as the button to perform the close and open actions uh, should be easy. So pretty much doable. And then we want to, the D22, like I, I talked with Sean a lot about this. Um, we haven't really I mean, got a good <clears throat> solution. Well, I, I don't, I think he thinks that it's like, um, I, I'm more concerned, like I want to get these merged by D22. And then I, I told him like, I think I told at least Kushal, right? And whoever was in, I think Yorka was in the call last time. We said like, oh, yeah. people don't know and stuff like that. So 
I don't know last time it was because of the summit, so let's let's not change any process. Um, but given that people don't know about due twenty second and you know we're we're just gonna do our best to to get the code ready and and get it ready for review and and ping people to review it, do you still think all these four are doable by due twenty second uh, targeting to be merged? you think that's still um, possible? So basically yeah. okay. Um, so if that's the case, let's move on to the rest of the stuff that we want to do. Um, so that's basically all these ones here. So I think we should, um, uh, there's, there's a couple of things here. So this is, uh, okay, no, this is fine. Um, so, so I think we can, I, I really want to do this, uh, uh Oh, sorry. This is, is this the one to, this is the direction, right? Because, so this will already be done for 11.3. Okay, that's great. So, so I think this is actually lower priority. So I, I want to clean up some things. So I definitely want this. Uh, but I actually, there, there's a lot here. So I actually don't know what's higher priority right now, or like I, I, I don't want to say, I want to get your thoughts on in terms of, I mean, I mean, Pedro and Annabelle as well, like what do you think is high priority? And then for from like a uh, development perspective, what do you think we can finish up really quickly? What's like a bigger one um, that we should wait? Any thoughts on these? They're, they're all to me like small things that we need to clean up and, and fix. I would uh, suggest that we can uh, go after the bugs first uh, in the existing features which are already in production. Like the, I can see there is one bug uh, related to system notes uh, where uh, Epic does not uh, link correctly to yeah. the reference issues. So those are, I think, uh, long-standing bugs uh, that we have been postponing across the releases. So we can go after those first before we tackle on to features. Okay. Yeah. I mean, anyway. the other ones are... are... They're not, I, the other ones are not really new features either. I mean, like, uh, yeah, none of them are new features if you look at it. I mean, this one is barely a new feature, um, but, but you're right. So uh, can I just about the quick question to it from issue references? It's, it is not a uh, new feature because it's not only about adding issue to Epic, it's also about referencing issue from Epic right. description exactly. and things like that. And um, I think we should do it actually. But also, I would like to say that it will include, uh, I'm not saying a lot of work, but a lot of uh, deeper exploration again, because it's, it's inside the Banzai, and, in Banzai extractor and, thing and so on. Mm -hmm. And also a question, do we want uh, to have auto complete as part of this issue? This one? Yeah. Uh... Probably no. If, if let, I mean, let's the, the bonsai filter thing that you just mentioned. Are, are you saying that's that's a lot more extra work that you're not confident about? No, no, no. I'm not saying it's a lot extra work. It's more that I have to switch my head okay. to that. Okay. Part so then, of the code. So then because let, it's yeah, not like normal epics. If you stop. but okay. I think we should do it pretty soon. So I wouldn't just postpone it. It just I'm just saying how it is. Right, also, right, right. I, I don't think that, that that's fr there's front-end work at all. I think it's only back-end. Okay. So, I mean, okay, that's fine. So, we, what we said is that we want to, uh, we want to do this. And yeah. currently, we don't have, we don't have autocorrect. So, I can't, what is it? Percent seven. So, we have nothing here, you said, for auto. No, 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 no. Right. And I think it shouldn't be part of this issue. Right, right, right. But you, you, you made the point, Yarka, that we don't even have that. So that's, that's actual work. That's why it is not related to, uh, to quick action. It's, it is basically related to references. Right, but we, we need like if we wanted a, a quick action where you type that. Yeah. Then we need. Then we need. Yeah, and then and then we type this then we need it because you're saying that right now when we do like when we do this we have that automatically and we don't even have that for epics 
Um, we, yeah, yeah, we don't. We don't have that for anything, right? Like, we don't have it on an Epic itself either, right? No, we don't. Okay, so we have that issue. So, oh, we do. Oh, oh, we we don't have like uh, autocomplete for referencing issues from Epics. Okay, so it would be a good idea to do that first, and then a second follow up would be to do a, like a third version of uh, quick action, right? Is I think that's what you yeah. said. Yeah. Okay. So With the let, autocomplete. Let me, yeah. Let me take a, a, a to do, to do that to to figure to create two extra issues, Yarka, um, to do that. Um, let me. Yeah. So so yeah, I'll I'll take a to do to do that. But um, so you still want to do this? It's still important. I, I agree. It's important. So I mean, these are all important. So like. I'm I'm fine with this approximate order sort direction for epics and low maps. We mean, uh, yeah, I think this is important. I think, I think the sort direction might be. Well, are are we going to do all of this? I think that's the first question. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. So uh, there's a lot here. So we're we're like, yeah, Kusha and Yarka. Like, how how do you feel for the rest of these? Like, well, how can we do all of them? Should we cut off like two or three or four of them? Uh, um, yeah, I'm not sure how. Like, if you look at uh, most of the issues individually, then they appear like uh, I cannot say for the back end, but at least for the front end effort is not much. But given that we'll be focusing entirely on new 22nd issues, at least until 22nd, uh, uh, until they are merged. We won't be able to focus on these, uh, and uh, if if we try to cover all the issues within the release, chances are even although all the issues are small efforts, uh, for the most part, uh, we might end up missing some of those. Yeah, so, I agree because even when it's small issue, the for instance the review process, you still have to go through it, and it can take a couple of days. So yeah. if you have ten issues, even if you have ten small issues, when you you are done right. in two days for them, then you have ten reviews. So I well, think we should. Well, it's, it's also faster. It's also faster. But uh, you know that that's but that's, that's not always true, actually. I mean, I mean, the the whole point is like I, I'm not disagreeing with like we should do less, but I, I'm just uh, uh, saying that we should have smaller issues, and these are to me yeah, these are all good issues because they're, they're all small. But yeah, I'm not saying like don't remove so. Um, also, right, right. if you have small issues, sometimes you can, you find out during implementation that a small issue is not, not actually a small issue, it's not <laughs> even a big issue, it's right. a big issue. Right. There is well, always I mean, this case. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, the assumption, they're, 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 I, I would say they're independent things that we want to do better at, right? We want to do better at, Yeah. we want to make things smaller, and then once they're small, we want to, we want our system, uh, we want our process to be really good at working on small issues and, and you know SDLC tells us that that should be the case uh, but a, a, an independent process and thing to retro on is how to make sure that the things we think are small issues are actually small issues um, so, so that, that that's a different problem I would say um, but but given yeah so everything we said I think we all agree on to some level um, but what I want and so what you said Kushal is perfectly correct which is Yes, please. Right now, the purpose of right now is estimating. Uh, we we did an estimate of what we want to do within by the twenty second, and starting on the twenty third, provided it's a Monday, and you're going to start working. <clears throat> how much are you going to get done by the seventh um, of of whatever uh, September, August, September? What's after September, October? So by November seventh. Um, yeah, November seventh. So. What what do you think we should cut out, given that this is the approximate uh, order? So should we? What should we remove? Uh, so, so one thing that uh, based on the discussions I had with Mark uh, when we were working on the uh, milestone date integration within the Epic. So mm -hmm. there is this issue uh, show actual dates within tooltips for milestones in Epic sidebar. So this is something that required some backend effort, effort from the mark as well, which is why I believe we postponed it uh, until the future release. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, depends on uh, how comfortable the archive is working on the backend side of it. I think we can cut it out at least for now because it isn't a blocker right now or to not to show the actual date. 
because uh, the problem was that we were trying to merge dates between uh, the milestones okay. uh, if, if there are multiple milestones involved. So it was a backend heavy thing rather than front end heavy. So that is something that we can uh, skip for now at least. Okay, I'm going to move it unless somebody complains. Okay. So let's let's move this. So Okay. Um so this is gone. And we need another feature to refresh automatically, obviously. Um So I will manually do that. We have a workaround. Um this, So now we have 5. <clears throat> I thought we had 7. So did somebody remove one already? Um yeah, didn't we have seven or something? I don't know. I think we did actually. I don't know what happened. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think something happened. <laughs> did this work? I don't know what happened. Well, we'll find out. Uh, we had the sort, the sort disappeared, right? Yeah, exactly. The server disappeared. That's weird. So what was it called? Sort something, right? Sort uh, epic. This one, right? Yeah, this happened before. Like you just look at this, right? I don't know. Uh, that's going to be really, really hard to reproduce that bug. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, oops. So, um, oops. Yeah, yeah, let's keep it here. Um, okay, it's still not here. I don't know what happened. Oh, yeah, no, this happened. Look at this. The label. Yeah. How did you do that? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I know. Um, I, I moved it to 22nd. <clears throat> That's no, problem. you didn't. You, you, no, it's I did that you... first. I did do that. I did do that 12 minutes ago. Oh, okay. that, that issue was here. It was here. And then I moved it manually here after, after we said that, oh, you know, it's going to take forever uh, to work on. So, oh, I, I, I recall like uh, when we were working on the assignees list, uh, it was a problem like if we would uh, move a particular issue from a label list into open or closed category, then we were supposed to remove all the labels it had. So right. that is kind of uh, intended behavior. Not sure if we would want it given that how it turned out to be. That's the intended behavior? To I, don't think all the labels? I don't think yeah, so. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't think I mean, so. <laughs> No, I don't think that was supposed to. That that's that, that's definitely a bug. That's weird. So, yeah. Um, are you are, are you just talking about something with assignee list, Kushal? Yes. So, like, uh, uh, while working on assignees list, we were supposed to fix a problem where when to retain the labels and when not to. So, for example, if there is an assignee list within this particular board, and if you drag an issue from say due twenty second list to a particular assignees list. Labels and everything are retained, just that uh, assignee would be changed for that particular issue. Right. But if you move the issue from labels list into the open category, then what happens is that assignees uh, are removed and also the labels. But uh, I'll, I'll have to debug this. Whether okay. there is some. Uh, oh, yeah, no, I mean, I mean there's, there's, I'll, I'll try to make it, I'll, I'll try to like use some test project to make the super, I mean, <laughs> super reproducible but I, i've seen this like this is the second time i've seen this so um it's definitely related and we have clear docs of, on what we're the 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 what, what's supposed to happen in the case that you referenced uh kushal so yeah. i'm not worried about that as well so uh but um let me write down um i don't have my computer uh or so what was the thing i'm supposed to do so the so i'm supposed to log this bug and uh, with labels, and then also, um, what, what do we say? Um, we said something about the quick action. Yeah, quick action, and and not labels. Quick action and references, right? Yep, and autocomplete. Okay, okay, so that's great. Um, so we, I think everything's more or less 
So sort sort was disappeared and is now back. That's great. Um, so what else should we remove here? So these these like are this is back end. Uh, that's great. So this is back end and front end. So should we should we try to do ones that are that don't have too many both back end and front end, right? So that makes it easier, right? What do you think? So what else should we kick out? This one, sort direction. From back end perspective, it would make sense. Yeah, I would feel more comfortable. Okay, so let me let me change this to one point five. Okay, and then so now we have back to five, so everything can fit on one page. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. Oh, yeah. does this look good, Kushal, as well? Kushal, does this look good? You're on mute. Yep. Uh, yep. Okay, so let's let's go with this. Um, yeah, like I want to finish everything. I want to try to like get a hundred percent. I know the do twenty seconds are annoying, so I, I definitely want all these to be done by the seventh. I don't, I, don't, I don't think there's any problem with that if we're if we're like estimating this. I want like a goal to be like we should have like all of these in review, preferably merge because that's like what we can control. So if you this is my your last chance to even kick out one more or, or you know like as many as you want right so i want you to be super conservative because i'd rather we be conservative and then start hitting 100% and then slowly creep up um and then do i that. i just like to know what was the second one the epic attribute showing an issue sidebar incorrectly is because okay this is um this thing here in the issue should not be here if you don't have, um, if you don't have oh, the right, yeah. right, I actually think it's only front end, but yeah. So it, this shouldn't be here. Oh, okay. Ah. Be because this this is not this uh, group does not have um, this group. It's interesting is... because uh, when you have a project which is not part of a group, you have it in your personal. Mm. Okay, so personal namespace. Then you see the the message. This fe feature is locked. Upgrade plan. Right. Yeah. That is definitely so, a front end bug. Uh, so I'll, I'll so the, the the problem here is that uh, so what happens is that it, every particular item within the sidebar uh, is is inconsistent across the app. And uh, the feature flags, especially based on what particular GitLab plan user or group is on, feature flags are only available on Haml side and not the JavaScript side. So this is more of a engineering discussion that even in the front end team we had, like whether it is wise to have those feature flags on the JS side because at the same time having those on the JS side is a problem because anyone can put a breakpoint within the browser and just toggle the flag and uh, would turn on the feature. For the most part, it won't work even if you do that because it would require a functional backend to work with it. So as you can see, like right now, Epic shows none because even if user manages to show that sidebar item, uh, it won't be working without the backend code, which has those feature flags check uh, all the places. So I'll look at it, uh, like how we can fix it. Uh, but yeah, it is definitely a front end problem. We need to hide that entire item. Uh, okay. The question is, do we want to hide it or do we want to uh, see the message that it's not available i think we only hide it uh, for different so uh, again coming back to that assignees list feature so what we do is that if you open uh, gitlab community edition then in in the uh, add list drop down we do not show the assignees tab at all we only show labels list we do not say yes. like the tab is available but you need to operate to a different plan we don't do that so i think hiding the option would be a better option Actually, uh, then we need to fix it also for the, first of all, we need to fix it also for the um, personal projects. And second of all, I think that uh, we are showing it for purpose because you want users to upgrade. Right. So, so there's, let's open that. Uh, let's see what, what, what I wrote here. Uh, Right. So are you saying that we should show the, yeah. Can the, I share my screen so that you can see what I see in my personal project? Sure. 
Hilf mir. Aha, wer, wer ist es? Ja, hier. So you can see that in Apex oh, I have yeah, yeah, yeah. this video is locked upgrade plan. Yes, and, and so that's that's what we're in my with. personal right. I remember seeing that before. Per I, I wrote that somewhere. Because so that's, I think that's, that's correct, correct, right? So that, that that's, that's correct. correct, yeah. Reference? Yeah, it's correct. And I think if we decide uh, if we want to fix that bug, we should follow this message. Right, and then so you you're seeing that. Do you mind um, screenshotting that that thing in the sidebar? That's fine. In in here. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I'm so let me write a comment that you're gonna uh, uh, should not show that with no disposable. Yeah, I already wrote that actually. What did I write? Um, the issue sidebar of any issue in that group should not show the epic attribute with no dismissible upgrade UI. Uh, only for gold ultimate should the epic. Oh, upgrade. okay. Yeah. So, so the the fix, the fix should uh, uh, introduce the dismissible. Is it dismissible? Um, no, it is not. Okay, okay. Let me should know should, should what I can just click. Oh don't don't show me this again. It is actually. Yeah. It is dismissible. I, I have tried that to be honest. Okay. Should introduce the dismissible upgrade UI yeah. uh, for free core bronze silver and blue. Uh right. So there's there's actually I mean there's a lot of cases here, so it's a bit annoying. Um, so, so Kushai, th this is like, right, like what I wrote here, right? Uh, including board. So, so like all the issue sidebars and then the board sidebar should have the dismissible UI. And then you know, if you don't mind, you can screen, you can update the description here and include that. Dismissible yeah, yeah, I will add the screenshot. Right. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's it. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so this this there is some some work here, right? Kushal, there's there are some like uh, yeah, me messy work. because if we if we want uh, the entire interactive UI to make the sidebar option dismissible with the message and all, right? But it's already yeah. done, right? I mean, like like it's already it's not done. I mean, but it's, yes, it, it is done. But uh, as as we had this discussion, like uh, the sidebar implementations across the app are inconsistent. So uh, when you look at the sidebar that we show for, in case of issue boards, that is entirely implemented in view. But if you go to any uh, issue itself, uh, on if you visit any issue page itself, then this okay. implementation is done uh, in Haml and plain JS uh, in combination. It is not implemented in okay. view. That's, that's so we would essentially have to duplicate uh, our efforts anyway. But, okay. Um, let's let's make it two issues then. Can can we do that? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so it's already done for the issue page because it's in the um, it's already done. I don't want to like minimize it um, for issue page. Uh, so not including sidebars of an issue that will be in thing. So, so follow up of this issue to do exactly the same thing, but for board sidebars, because the issues sidebar and boards implemented in view. Uh, so, Okay. So um, that's fine. Okay. So that that's really bad. so that needs to be fixed at some point. Um, so what, what what do I have to do here? Uh, okay. 
think that's good enough, right? No. Okay, so let's 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 worry about it in eleven five, and let's fix one thing at a time. So, oh my god, what did I do? Okay, that's great. Um, what what where do where do we need to look at? Um, so okay, so we said okay, so we could do all this. Uh, anything else before we move on to the next topic, which is going to be a quick one before we leave? No, I think we are fine. Good, good with all this. So yeah, so so focus is on these ones for the next couple of weeks, and then and then work on these ones. Yeah, uh, I guess that makes sense. I don't I don't have any particular order. I think just try to get them all done. But um, you know, pick pick the one you think you can do as soon as you can. And we'll go from there. So let's look at our agenda and see if anybody put anything else. No. Um, so um, if you look at our roadmap, um, this is probably going to get stretched out a little bit. That's fine. Um, we're wrapping up like these things. So if you look at until the end of the year, uh, more or less, there's we're not doing anything new, new. I mean, like closing is, I guess, pretty new. So, I mean, a bunch of yeah. people are going to ask like new things once closing is done. But if you click on this, all these things, like for example, this one, I think everything is, um, oh no, there's a lot of stuff to be done. We released something? I did not know that. This is great. We Today's the fourth. Um, yeah, but we release, we have new release process, I suppose. So yeah, so I'm really confused. This is the, this is crazy. I mean, crazy good, crazy. <laughs> so we are on 11.3 now. That's nuts. On the fourth, oh my goodness. Wow. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go crazy and just change it. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna change all these really quickly. So this will radically look different. Like we're not used meeting. to this, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, whoa. I'm like, I'm like, what am I looking at? Is, is this production? So, um, but if you look at make, so this is, these two are going to be done really soon. These are big things like to be done um, by the end of the year. So that's, that's a make FX easier to use, that's, you know, by the end of the year. Um, this, we should be done. This is more or less done after, right? So yeah, so you can see like there's a couple more things to wrap up in the following yeah. iterations, um, but you know they're not like big big new things. Um, so hopefully you can appreciate that. Like if you click on the ones here, it's more it's my estimation, but I don't think it's ridiculous. Um, and feel free to comment if you think it is ridiculous in terms of estimates of like um, what we can do in the next couple of months or like until the end of the year because we're we're in September already, right? Um, so this one, we're, we're also pretty much done, right? Uh, we need to do these things, but yeah, so this is more or less done. So that's great. So you can see like in the new year, what we want to do is I, I really want to do this. So this would probably be pushed back a bit. So I think we should be able to just move left or right. So we might delay that's that. That's front end, I think, isn't it? Uh, I, there, there might be some crazy thing back end because like if you move left or right or up or down, you might have to load in some new epics. Oh yeah, that's true actually. Yeah, so there, this, this might get a little bit hairy. So I, I don't know, like right now this is good enough for us, for example, like we're using roadmaps right now, or at least you know, I'm showing it to you. And then, you know, I, I don't care. Well, I mean, I do care what's in Q4 in 2019 and 2020. But right now this seems like it's good enough. So there might be a, a um, a, a argument to push this out, but um, I think we should do it. But uh, we we can we can argue about that. Um, but if you look at the rest of the what what I want to do is um, basically flexible work breakdown structure. So there's two big areas in portfolio management that our customers are telling us that they're, they're super uber important, and one of them is uh, work breakdown structure. And what that means is that just getting more levels of scope, right? Whether that's sub issues 
or sub epics, or we're not calling it sub epics. We're just calling it epic relationships um, because apparently that was confusing um, when I was trying to explain it, explain it. So I think this is a much better name that um, uh, I think Annabelle and, and Sean at least agreed with. And basically having epics of epics, right? And so that's something that a customer is really want, or that's one of the two things that customer wants, which is having epics of epics or having issues of issues and, and just having a structure downward. And then also having capacity management. So saying things like, um, you know, you have, you know, 20 points of capacity for this milestone, you know, somebody goes on vacation, uh, so uh, various things and you can do better predictions and, and just plan stuff in the future based on that. And that's a lot harder problem to solve in that it's more very specific to teams and, and customers are saying they want work breakdown structure first before capacity management. And so if you look at the rest, like a bunch of 2019, what I've done is created all these epics. Um, Annabelle has looked at some of them, I, I hope, or, or, or I've shown it to her at least. Excuse me. And, um, and so you can click through to, to look at some of these here. Um, but I wanted to show you one particular issue. I think it's, um, um, uh, where is it? Sorry, let me give me a second. I should be able to find it. <clears throat> uh, it's uh, an issue where I laid out all these things. So it's, um, <clears throat> I have things from other, okay. So I'll place this issue in the um, in the agenda that you guys can look at if you want to. You don't have to, um, but uh, oops. So <clears throat> there we go. So this issue um, documents what this is the flow of how users would use epics and start planning at a high level. So it's, it's taking the approach of let's, let's look at how people would use GitLab or are using GitLab right now or would use GitLab. And so a lot of these are, are us thinking what customers do use. A lot of these are customers saying, I want this feature, I want that feature. And then us you know, putting it all together into one flow and, and, and saying like, are we capturing all the steps of this flow? And so if, this is similar to like how we, we, like product marketing was talking about idea to production like say in 2017, and now we talk more about complete DevOps. So, so it's similar to that, um, but the, the scale or the scope is, is, is a lot smaller. It's not like entire GitLab is just, you know, within portfolio management or, or within plan, say. So you can see it's things like product manager or, or engineering manager or somebody at the company says, I want to do a high level strategic initiative. I, I want to build, you know, uh, portfolio management features in GitLab. So, so, and then I want to do like two or three, three high level initiatives. And then, so how can you do that right now inside GitLab? You can do that by, you can create new ethics, you can update descriptions and you can add labels. So this part of the flow is pretty much already covered. <clears throat> you want to set approximate timelines, far away timelines. Um, you can do that in GitLab right now, right? So you can set fixed dates and view them on the roadmap. You want to talk with different people in your organization and say like, are those things possible that you, that you want to do far in the future? And so we can do that in GitLab, right? So you have, you know, comment threads, you have notifications, you have to do's. Then once you've talked to these people um, and things are more realistic, you've talked to engineers, you've talked to operations people, you've talked to legal. And the, so these things that are far in the future are really are, are becoming realistic. Then you can actually break them down into real work, right? So you can break down high level ideas into smaller chunks, start scoping out work. So this is the concept of work breakdown structure. So, oops. Um, so we precisely don't have this, right? And so these are some of the, the ethics that I've scoped out to, to work on these things. Um, and then once you have that, then let's estimate the effort on those things. So we have issue weights as a feature, but we don't have, say, issue weights integrated into epics. So this is an epic of how, how we could do that. And then once we have, um, these two, I think, are pretty interesting. Once we have scoped out work 
an estimated work. Let's, so these, like the next four steps are more or less in parallel or, or like they're more of a cycle than linear. You would say, um, how can we schedule the work in different sprints, like or milestones or, or iterations? So right now we can do that because we have milestone list inside a board, but you don't really know the epic. Um, so this concept is swim lanes that, that Pedro introduced in one of the issues. And so an idea would be, let's put swim lanes in boards. And, and so we have issues, um, so we can move issues across milestones, but see them inside across epics as well. So epics being the swim lanes. And then once you're in, once you've done that scheduling, um, and you've done this high level as estimation, it's gonna appear in 2019 Q1, but then you know your engineering manager says that's not possible because of these reasons, and you've done the estimates, then you, you can go from this top-down planning mode to a bottoms up planning mode, and which we this is now already in production, right? So you can go from fixed states to from milestone states, and then that's that's a great way to do it. And then so then now you can look at your um, you can look at your epics here right you can look at your roadmap view oops you can look at your roadmap view and then you can seamlessly know that some things are fixed states and then the far away ones are probably fixed states and in the future maybe you might you know have a feature that shows that and then the ones that are closer are, are um, inherited dates and then you can do um, you can view milestones on the roadmap. So even if you're looking at the roadmap view, then you can you can you can start planning your milestones. So like uh, you're supposed to cringe, Pedro, when you're looking at these because these are not finalized at all. So don't worry about this. Um, but um, I mean, the it's whole point. Of, fine. I love them. So yeah, the, the whole point of me of sharing this to the folks here on the call is not like we're going to do this, right? It's me communicating. Yeah, no, my vision to this to you and then it's like if you have an opinion about this then please you know work on it and then obviously it's more of the responsibility of Pedro and animal to 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 work on this but you know at GitLab everybody can contribute so so the idea here is that whether you're in the um, board mode or you're in the roadmap view you can still look at how things are progressing both from an epic perspective and a milestone perspective so from the board perspective everything is obvious from a milestone perspective you still get the epic um you get the epic view as well you don't lose that and then same thing for the roadmap and the roadmap view is really good for showing epics and it's really good for showing real time like in terms of like months and dates and or weeks um and days but you don't lose milestones if we can get milestones integrated into a roadmap view and so, so that's the idea of how you can view your plan and track it over time and then so you can track your progress uh, whether it's in the epic or in the roadmap, you can you can do that by based on um, some of the things I listed here, like by showing weights and stuff like percentage complete and stuff like that. And then once you're done, you can close the epic. And then this thing here, I just wanted to add it here for completion, which I, I don't like this idea because it looks really ugly right now. But the concept here is that um, something that we won't, we unlikely will not use, but maybe we will in the future, right? So I think we we should. We should say we shouldn't say stuff that we won't use ever. But the idea is here. Um, so say that um, right now, I I put this epic here that's supposed to start here and end here. And then so you have some organizations will say like, I put this epic here, I planned it here, and this because I'm a huge organization, it will impact, you know, like five different departments. It will impact operations. It will impact like. Say you're like Uber, right? And then you plan a new feature and then you're gonna launch it in like 10 different cities. And then that will impact like operations because they have to hire like managers in those cities. They have to, you have to hire drivers. They have to compete with Lyft, right? So if you're not gonna finish your feature, you're gonna get screwed over. So if you're the development organization inside Uber and you promise this feature and then the operations team knows about that, they're gonna make their plans according to your plans, right? So it's really, really crucial that you once you've set you know, a quote unquote, an epic that with this scope, it doesn't change. And if it does change, you need to track the hell out of that, right? And so how you would track it right now, what we do is you can only pick one, you can pick fixed dates, and you can pick like it's not fixed, right? So that it inherits. So what, so say I planned it from here to here, 
and then it becomes inherited, but, but it becomes actually delayed, right? So then we don't know what was originally fixed. And so for GitLab, it's not the worst thing in the world because we missed that quote unquote, the original deadline because we just know that, uh, or we're just extending and that's just the latest source of truth and that's okay. But for a company like Uber, like say you're here and your latest date is like your estimate, it's here and you're like, oh no, what, what are you gonna do? So are you go, you need, you need to show that to the operations team that you know you're gonna be delayed or you need to react to that by hiring more and then you know you guys are developers and you know mythical man woman month and you know that doesn't actually work um but the idea is like from project management's perspective you want to know things are going to be delayed so how do you solve that within gitlab i, I don't know i have an idea which i don't like which is this um, um which i think is pretty cool because we'll just build it on top of our existing feature but i really hate it because it's so ugly which is you just use both Right now, if this is a radio button, then you just pick one, right? The idea here is you, you put both. Um, and so please cringe, Pedro, if you don't like this, because I don't like it either. Yeah, no, no, I'm sorry to cringe a little bit. Yeah, but you would show both, because if you have both end dates, then you can show both here and here, right? So then that's an immediate way to do it. So um, I think there's like one customer that's asked for it. So this is not something that um, I don't think we really need right now. I don't think a lot of customers are asking for it but I just want this issue to be here and be able to show it to customers and have them comment on it. But you can see that I haven't even, um, I haven't put an Epic on this at all. So it's not, even, this feature is not. I think, on so this well, I, I think we, we are already doing it in some way uh, because um, right now in Epics, when you have the fixed and from milestone, if you have conflicting dates, we already uh, tell you uh, oh no, we ended up not doing that. But there and was you know, this yeah, idea. And you that, also don't even show on the roadmap, like regardless of like the... the yeah, we don't show it on the roadmap. But, but what I was trying to say is that at some point we thought about... Uh, telling you. Uh, yeah, telling the user you. that your fixed dates are not, could not be uh, realistic because exactly. what you're planning for your milestones is way... Uh, exactly. into time you're planning for a very short epic and so exactly. it might not go down uh, as you want it to be <laughs> it's a great way to put it, yeah. so uh so i think it's just a matter of us recovering that design and then um see how it that into the yeah, roadmap, yeah. The yeah. roadmap. Yeah. Uh, yeah and that's also something that uh, jira portfolio already does I exactly think. yeah and they do they already tell you that you're man you're gonna slip this like yeah yeah really yeah like you're screwed you calculated yeah. everything and it's not gonna work <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly so to me that's the the like that needs to be done I, I maybe that's not even a 2019 goal and then maybe it's a 2020 goal if, if we need it or maybe it's one of those things that it's like crazy that Jira thinks people need it but it turns out like nobody actually needs it in the industry so it's hard to say we'll, we'll find out but then there's this like whole new category of like what if scenario planning, which is like, again, Jira has like, you click something, like you change, like what if you had like twice the number of engineers? Well, what would happen? And then you, you click a button and then this boom magically changes based on that. So to me, that's almost related to that or it should be related to that somehow, um, but it's not, not clear. Um, but anyways, I wanted to, to show you this thing here, um, which you can always go to and, um, show you this issue which I linked in the, the agenda to see the flow and then so it's a uh, you can think of it as a flow it's like I2P flow right uh, idea to production have we filled up all the gaps and so right now um, the big gaps are the, the work breakdown structure I mentioned and then some of the really cool things within work breakdown structure are um, to me would be um, would be uh, and I have like four minutes so I'll, I'll give you one more minute because I know um, maybe too long, but for example, um, this is really something that's obvious, but to me it's just, it's just really cool that the way we've designed this thing here works perfectly. Um, but the idea here is, I think this is just words, so it's really confusing. So I think Animal had like a really awesome diagram that I can explain the feature I had. So Annabelle put this thing here. So the idea I have here which hopefully you'll, you'll, you folks will agree on, is that say you have a set of issues here and then you have a start date and a fixed date and it's fixed, right? And then now you make it dynamic. 
it's just going to inherit the milestone dates of these folks, right? And then so it'll be start date, end date here. And so when you have sub epics or epics of epics, this end date or this end date and start date, if you go from left to right, it'll just inherit the start and end dates of these epics, right? And then this one will inherit the start and end date of these two epics automatically. So right now our feature will just inherit milestone start and end dates of issues. But my proposal is that the epic will take whatever its children are and then it will take the, the left and right of those and then the extremes and then that it will inherit and that will be, so instead of being from milestones, it'll just be like from children and it'll be very generic. So you're not, we don't have to invent like a third radio button. It'll just be from children. And so I like, I really think that's awesome because literally no UI has to be changed. Like you change a word to from milestones to from, to from children but everything will be consistent. Like the, the roadmap left and right edges will be consistent. Everything in the UI will be consistent. So I'm really excited for once we do epics of epics, we can have this, this type of feature. So let me pause there and get your really excited ideas. <laughs> uh, if not, I, I'll, I'll end this call. So any comments or questions based on that? If not, um, then we will meet, I guess. Yeah, I'll comment in the, the issue, but uh, thank you so much, Victor, for yeah. uh, showing this. And no, it's awesome. good that it's recorded, so we can, like, you can trim this and then put it in the, the channel exactly. so that other people can look at it as well. Exactly, exactly. So, so the idea is to, um, we should still have detail, like I, when I joined GitLab and then when, I, I think people new to GitLab are uncomfortable with such details going forward um and, and like why are we planning all this stuff that we we know we'll never do or like we don't have enough mm -hmm. resources or people to do as we're not supposed to call them resources um but the idea is that we we plan things in a certain level of detail to a greater level of detail and so that we can get feedback from people within the organization and outside the organizations and also we can quickly hire the people or we move people around in teams when we see something strategic so it is important that there's this level of detail that far in the future, like a whole year. Um, and then we work toward them. I can't find that picture, but that's it. All right, so I'm done talking. Um, if not, uh, or if nothing else, then we will meet next Tuesday. And yeah, okay, last thing, I will so put this on YouTube. Anything Ready? that anybody said that they do not want to put on YouTube, and I will not put this on YouTube. So... <laughs> Nothing else, then I will put it on YouTube. Okay, talk to you folks next week. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Bye.